I'm Mike McDowell, and this is User Testing in 15 Minutes. Here we go. This is the User Testing Dashboard. This is the first thing you see when you log in. Over on the left side of the screen, reporting and insights discovery, your drafts, your tests, and your highlight reels and your templates are all over there. In the center of the screen, you've got tests that you have pinned, things you're working on or want to show more frequently with more of their full content down below. But most importantly, in the upper right, you have your create a test button. You click on this, you're going to see all of the great options that you can do in the user testing experience research platform. You've got think out loud testing, which is your standard unmoderated testing. You've got interaction tests, which are basically like usability tests at scale for success and fail metrics, things like the QX score, true baseline and benchmarking metrics, uh, surveys, live conversations that you can do. Very, very easy to schedule exactly the people you need and actually have a live conversation with them. There's 118 templates when I'm recording this. Everything from people going back to the office, which we see in the financial services sector, all the way to usability testing, app store feedback, perception testing, competitive benchmarking, it's all there in the template gallery. I'm gonna show you that right now. When you go into the template gallery, you can see all of these 118 templates. There's filters to get through those templates, depending on the methodology that you're doing, uh, the phase of the development that you're at, what assets you want to get feedback on, and what your role is. You can use all of these to filter down to exactly what you need. But if you're not an expert in user testing or user research, you could just use the quick answer templates. These are fill in the blank templates. I call these the Mad Libs of market research. Look at this. You can scroll right down here and see test website usability. If you want to do a very simple test of something like your conversion funnel, you simply have to say, use this template. And it's going to ask you, what is the website you want people to use? You would type in, let's just say, amazon.com. And then what's the task you want people to accomplish? You might say something like, go and find uh, the laundry detergent that you use and put it in your cart. And then you just name the test. So you call it laundry detergent findability, something like that. All you have to do then is decide who are you going to get feedback from by choosing from user testings networks, or you can recruit your own people if you already have them. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna say next. It put me right into the test. You can see Amazon laundry test. We've got the audience selector here and we've got our test plan builder over here. Now, there is nothing to edit in the test plan builder because everything has been preset for us by using that template. Now I'm gonna select my audience. Very simply, I go into the audience builder and I can decide how many people I want, what device they need to use, different demographic information like age, let's say, um, you know, I'm going to do 32 and up. What country? United States. Any household income or job or gender? You can pick all of these things and then you come down and you ask some screener questions. And we'll just say, do you have a laundry machine at home? Just a very simple question. And we're going to say yes, no. And we're going to say accept and reject. And we'll just say done. Now we've got a very basic study and I can just press launch right now and it will go out and it will be filled in three hours or less. A study this simple. Do you have a laundry machine at home, people in the United States? This is going to fill in minutes. My record is 23 minutes for a full study to be done. Something as simple as this. And this one with such a broad audience will be done very quick, but 85% of studies are done in three hours or less. Now, instead of hitting launch on this test, I'm going to take you into another study to show you what the output looks like. We're back at the dashboard. I'm going to go ahead and click on this Hertz website deal finder usability study, which used that exact template that I just showed you about our Amazon laundry study. We're going to click into this one and you can see very fast. We're right into this results. It is a very simple dashboard of results about your study. Uh, high level data, things like what made it easy, hard, perceived purpose, perceived value, what needs work. I can click on that and see very simply um, the different things that people said. Understandability, navigation, someone said none of the above. Great. But let's get into the actual metrics. The metrics tab within a user testing think out loud unmoderated study is where the user testing platform really shines and stands apart from everyone else in the industry. This is where every step of your study 
is delivered to you in a visualization that I like to call insights at a glance. And on top of that, there's great AI features that are going to actually help you synthesize the research faster than ever before. Let's go. Right up on the top here, we've got instant insights panels, which will draw some correlations and insights for the different questions in your study, like the average rating on a particular task. And hey, people who gave it a rating of a four for this first question, they express negative sentiment. Now, this is actually number four in this question correlates to the a value of easy. They think it's going to be easy to complete this task, but they're giving out negative information, negative feedback, negative sentiment. We can just click on this and we can actually play those clips to see why they're giving it negative feedback. And what we find if you do that is they're explaining why they didn't give it a five. So this is a level of depth with a think out loud study and a survey style question that you just cannot get from a pure survey alone, which is why user testing is great because it combines all these different methodologies like surveys and think out loud studies. And you can actually run these studies back to back to see, yes, at scale, what are people scoring things? And then from a qualitative perspective, what did they actually feel about these answers and why did they score them this way? Quantitative platforms will give you the what Qualitative platforms give you the why. User testing brings the best of both. Scrolling down, we get to our actual task. Take as much time as you need to find the promotion that saves you the most money on a rental car in Orlando. You come down here and you're getting what's called an interactive path flow. This is very similar to a Google Analytics or Adobe Analytics's unique path flow report or a path analysis report, except instead of URLs, we're getting actual images of the pages that people went to in, the, in this actual experience. Now you can see the URL is right here as well, but this is actually showing you what did it look like when these three people highlighted in blue over on the left, what did it look like when, one, when they were on the page? So this is what you're seeing here. You can also see this bar, this actual orange diagonal line is telling us there was friction on the page, something to do with up here in the upper left. This particular user had friction, that's automatic with user testing friction detection. This is great. We can see who went where, what they did. But if I click on an individual, this is remarkable. You can see each and every page that this individual user went to. And by clicking on expand all, I can see all of the individual interactions. Click, what did they type? Next page, accept the cookies, select for reservation, click continue, and so on as they move through the process. You can see all of this out of the box. There is nothing to install. There's no code to write. Nothing has to be inserted into your website, which means that customers of user testing can get this exact data about their own website or their competitors or their distributors. So it's very important if you're living in a black hole where you don't know anything about your distribution channels, except for the amount of sales you do, this is the way you can figure out what the customer experience is on a distribution channel or on a competitor to see where are you truly different from the competition. But not just the clicks, the data input, the searches and the scrolls. You can also see how people felt on these pages. So you can see in this particular process, six positive moments, 10 negative moments. We've got a lot of great stuff here. We can click on a page. We can see that this is what the page looked like. Here's people who had negative or positive comments. I can click on that individual, see the transcript. I can click into the transcript and I can actually see the video playback. Look at all this rich sentiment that is being shown. But this is the moment where I'm at in the particular video. I'm going to say resume auto scroll. It's going to take me right to that moment. I think you're asking me for me to find. So I can see right here is a dislike. I think you're asking me to find something like this. And is that what a promotion is? They don't really understand. So let's say I want to just take that, highlight it. I can make a clip and I'm just going to hashtag this confusion. Make it negative. Save the clip. Now I go to my notes and clips and I go over here and I can take any clip that was made and I can just say, take this, I can add it to a highlight reel, I can share it, edit it, download it, or I can delete it. If I hit share, look at this, anyone with the link can watch the clip. They don't need to have an account on user testing. You can share this with anyone to actually very quickly generate empathy for the customer in the experiences that they're having. Most people in the back office don't ever see customers. This is a way to bring the customer right to their desktop or to their phone and let them see exactly what's happening with customers. Now I go up and up here, I've got 
the AI generated task summary. This is telling you exactly what people did in their tasks. You can see this. Contributors navigated through the website, clicking on various links and scrolling through pages. One contributor considered joining the car loyalty program for better deals and concluded that joining the loyalty program is the best option. You can click on this and actually see who said that. What did they do? What goes into these different clips? You can also see the contributor summary and look at literally what everyone did. This is exact. This is one user, every interaction that they had during this task. You can actually export this or copy all the summaries so you can do deeper analysis with this data. Great stuff. Down below, there's one, one extra other thing here I want to show, and that's this. This is a keyword map. So if you ask someone a verbal question, you're also going to get these great AI task summaries, but you're also going to get a keyword map, which is a sentiment-driven word cloud. And you can actually click on any one of these things, and it'll show you the transcript of who said what. We can expand the whole thing. We can play the clip, et cetera. Really, really awesome stuff here to help you find those moments that matter in seconds. Forget months, forget weeks, forget days. We're talking about finding moments that matter in seconds. And just a reminder that anything that you find, you can click on and you can play that video clip. Now, jumping back over to our dashboard, you saw all kinds of other options here of things you can do. Let's go and look at the output of a survey. When I click into a survey, you're going to see things a little bit differently, but this is the future of user testing. This is the way things are going. And when I look at the results of my survey, the biggest thing I want to show you is the AI themes for written responses. The hardest thing to go through and the most time consuming thing to go through in a survey is written responses because they don't aggregate by nature. You've got all kinds of output, things that are multiple choice, different kinds of questions that will actually that will sort for you multiple choice. So we'll tell you all this here. Here we go. What is your the most favorite thing about the vehicle you drive now? Now here are AI themes that have been automatically generated by user testing. Technology and features, reliability, fuel efficiency economy, performance, and cargo towing capacity. These are automatically generated themes based on the responses. You can see how many mentions are in them. You can click on these if you want, or we can go look at the raw responses. Drives very smoothly, fast and cool, fuel efficiency, towing capacity for a minivan, et cetera. So you've got all these options and it tells you what theme it applied it to. So now we're talking about thousands of respondents possibly. And now we're able to synthesize that data super quickly, just like before. We can export everything. It's easy, easy, easy to do with user testing. Now I talked about highlight reels before. I do just want to show you that one last bit. We're going to come over here. We go to our highlight reels. And now I see all these highlight reels that I've generated for Hertz through the miracle of movie magic. I automatically search for these right away. But you can see right here, you got tip of the week demo, Hertz highlight reel. Here's clips from the usability finder, the deal finder usability study right here. All very, very easy. And what is a highlight reel? It is merely a series of clips that are brought together to summarize the output of your research. You can see right here, we can name this anything we want. We can call it usability study. We can call it deal finder study. And then here's four clips that I put together right here. All these things can be downloaded. You can share them. You can give out links to them just like you saw before. The last thing I want to show is something brand new. It's called Insights Discovery, and it revolutionizes the way that you can synthesize and get insights from your research with user testing. With Insights Discovery, you simply type questions like a prompt, like you would do with a ChatGPT or any other AI engine. Now watch this. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ask it a question. What do users think of the Hertz website? I've not looked at this before. I've not done it before. So this is live. This is really putting my money where my mouth is. And we search. Answer delivered. Based on the pride of data, users generally have a positive impression of the Hertz website, highlighting its user-friendly design, comprehensive information, and transparency of pricing and fees. However, some users also suggest areas for improvement, such as the inclusion of more customer feedback and reviews. So we get all this great data. It's organized brilliantly. We've got uh, key headings here. And then the really amazing thing is down below, we've got suggest. <clears throat> Down below, we've got suggestions for follow-up. So right here, we see some users suggest areas for improvement, such as the inclusion of more customer feedback and opportunities for customization. So here's the suggestions for follow-up questions. And over here on the right, it says, what are the main areas for improvement that users have identified for the Hertz website? Let's click this. Answer delivered. 
improving the website's user interface and user experience. Now we got four bullet points for this. Participants recommend improving the website's navigation, enhancing the website's search functionality and content presentation. Then we've got uh, improving the website's overall performance and responsiveness. More follow-up questions. So you can keep asking questions again and again. This is basically like having a full-time research assistant just sitting with you, helping you go through and finding new insights that you weren't even looking for in the original study. My study was about finding a great deal, but I can ask it all kinds of other questions about things that may have been exposed during the study. And it's going to give them to me again in seconds, not weeks, not days, not hours, and not minutes, it's seconds. And that was it. That was user testing in 15 minutes. Hope you enjoyed it. Until the next time, I will see you later.